What's up everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. In this brand new series, you will learn how to make Mastermind, also sometimes called Code Breaker, on Scratch 3. The game layout is fairly simple and the code maker can enter a specific colored code by clicking on the coin a definite number of times. The code breaker can then try and decipher the code with the help of the evaluations from the computer itself. If the player wins or loses, we have a different end screen for each and within the end screen, you can either click play again to start playing the game once again, or you can just click close if you wanna look through your code once again. So that's gonna be our mastermind game. And without further ado, let's get right into our code. Since this is the first video in the series, I will be mentioning that all the game assets or images will be linked for download in the description below in the form of a Google Drive attachment. Also, if you find that you have bugs because you coded something incorrectly, I've linked the scratch files in individually part by part so you can download the exact file you want or the exact part you want and then move on. So I'm going to start off by importing the thumbnail. So head over to choose a sprite, click upload sprite and you can click on the one which says thumbnail. Now this is the thumbnail that we will be using and it fits exactly onto the screen. So uh, I'll be saying when the green flag is clicked, um, go to x0, y0, uh, the center of the stage. And after this, we have to do something a little bit different because I don't want the thumbnail to show when we are playing the game or when we start playing the game. So I'll add in a show, but I will also be setting the ghost effect to 100. And you can actually do that inside of forever loop. So add in a forever loop and then within looks, you can just say set, not, uh, oops, set, not color effect, but set ghost effect to be 100. And this will ensure that uh, when we do press the green flag, this is hidden. And when we, you know, press the stop sign, this comes right back. The only problem with this though, is that if we press the green flag, then do something with the cat and then uh, press the stop sign, you can see that the thumbnail shows on top of the cat instead of at the bottom. And uh, that will be true for not just the cat because we will be deleting it, but for the other sprites that we will be using in our game. So what we need to do here is add in or go to front layer uh, in addition to setting the ghost effect to 100. So if you add that in, you can do whatever you want with the cat. And still, when you press the red flag, you can see that our thumbnail just heads right back. And uh, if you want this to be um, shown in your scratch.mit search page as, you know, this kind of thumbnail, you can just save your program while the thumbnail is shown in your um, screen area. So this should be pretty good. All right, so now I'm gonna delete the cat sprite and then make a new sprite called the initializer. I'm gonna put this sprite first because, well, the initializer is the first sprite that uh, should have been initially coded, but I just thought the thumbnail was better to add on right there. So within the initializer, I'm gonna make three new lists and the first list is going to be called move and all of these are gonna be for all sprites. So I'm gonna um, name them all in capital letters. So move, the second list is going to be called correct move and the third list is going to be called clone correct move. And uh, as of now, just have these three lists set up. I'll explain a little bit later what we have inside each one of these lists. Now you can make three more variables and before that you can also delete the my variable variable. These three variables are gonna be for all sprites. So the first variable I'm gonna set up is gonna be called move number. And this is going to be responsible for, you guessed it, holding the current move. And after this, I'll make another variable and uh, once again, these two variables, which I'm gonna be um, naming right here, don't worry about what they do yet. Um, just follow me along. So this one's gonna be called correct change. Okay, current change, uh, not correct change. And the third one is going to be called can make move. And once again, this is gonna be all in capitals, but after this, uh, I'm gonna make a small change to this. So I'm gonna say can make move, and I'll add in a question mark. And this is to signify that this particular variable is a boolean variable and can store only two values. Now in some videos you'll see you know, uh, them storing zero and one. In some videos you'll see them storing um, yes and no. And um, some videos will, you'll be seeing true and false. But in Scratch you just have strings so it doesn't really matter which one you do. And uh, for the sake of this series, I'll always be storing boolean values as either yes or no. So now you can click OK. And uh, also you can hide all these uh, variables in lists because it's not really necessary to clutter up the screen. So now head over to events, grab a when green flag is clicked. And um, for this game, what I'm gonna do is to add an option in the end, which says play again. 
And if we have a when green flag click for every single um, sprite, then it's going to lead to some problems and we will not be able to just restart the game whenever we want. So what's essential to add is you need to broadcast some message when the green flag is clicked. And uh, because of that, all our code starts based on that message. And then if we want to start again, we can just broadcast that message. So I'm going to say initialize and this is going to be our message. So click OK and uh, start off the code with when I receive initialize. To this block, you can add in a couple of setups. So I'm going to say set can make move to be yes. Then I will be setting move number to be one. So set move number to be one. And the current change, it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to set it to be a zero initially, but this will be changed in other sprites. So you don't have to worry about this. So after this, I'll be deleting all the items of these three lists so that uh, we don't have anything to start with when the game starts, because if we do, then that's obviously going to mess things up. So add in delete all of, uh, not just clone correct, but move, delete all of correct move. And we also delete all, all of clone correct. I think I called it clone correct, but I'll rename it to be clone correct move just so that it emphasizes more on what it really is. So now click OK and delete all of clone correct move. Perfect. So now it's time to set up a move and correct move list. So what I'm going to do is head over to control, grab a repeat. And each one of these lists is going to be for items. OK, I'll get into what those items are. Just hold on for now. So I'll be repeating four times. And uh, here I will be saying add blank to um, not clone correct move, but add blank to be uh, to move. And we also add blank to correct move. So this is going to result in each of these lists having four blanks at the end of the initialized message. But since I don't have the backdrop set up yet, I can't really do that uh, right now. So now head over to choose a background, click upload background, and uh, you can head over to the folder which says backdrops and load both of them in. So uh, within your stage backdrops, you should see three backdrops now. And I will delete this backdrop one and just have these two essential ones. Okay, so now head over to the code of the initializer. And then after this, you can just say switch backdrop to. Um, I think the backdrop uh, we need to switch to is going to be this first one, which uh, sorry, the second one, which is start. So I'll be saying switch backdrop to start. And after this, like I mentioned, we'll broadcast another message so that the rest of the program can all start at the same time. And this message is going to be called show move enter. OK, show move enter. And this is going to be uh, uh, heading over to the backdrop and um, a part of the game where we have to enter in the correct move or where the code maker has to enter in the move that the code breaker has to break. Um, I could leave the code right here, but what I'm going to do is to move all of this code into a function. And the reason I'm doing this is so that it speeds up our code. Scratch by default is going to update the screen after every single block of code. And as you can see here, that's not really needed. I mean, we aren't updating the screen anywhere except in the last, um, in the last block. And after the end of the block, if we have, you know, something called a collective block, it's going to upload, uh, it's going to update the screen anyway. So now you can head over to my blocks, click make a block, and I'm going to call this block begin, but you can call it initialize or whatever you want. And make sure you click run without screen refresh. And this is what's going to make sure that all the code refreshes collectively. Now you can click OK, and you can put the begin function on top and join all the blocks, uh, all these lines of code to that and just move that to the side, call in the function here. And after that, you can just broadcast show move enter. Uh, since this is the initializer and there's no costume, there's absolutely no need of a show or hide. And well, this is pretty much all you will need in your initializer. All right, so now it's time to set up a move maker sprite. So once again, within choose a sprite, click on upload sprite. And um, this time you can click on within drive, you can click on the coins folder and just upload this one which says blank, okay? And now we can call this uh, particular sprite move maker because well, it's going to make the moves. And uh, now within its costumes, you can um, within choose a costume, click upload costume and select all of this except the blank costume. And what this is going to result in, as you will see, is a whole bunch of costumes that's going to load up. And as you can see, this is pretty great. So what I'm going to do here is actually never mind. I'm not going to reorder the costumes. It's all I think in default by alphabetical order since it was arranged that way in the folder. But anyway, let's leave it as it is. And now we can head over to the code. 
This is going to start when we receive not initialize, but the show move enter or um, show move enter or message. So now you have to set up four different uh, local variables or private variables. What do we want to call them? And the first one is going to be called beginning start x. The second one is going to be called game start x. Uh, the third one is going to be called just hold on for a second game start x. The third one is going to be called dim. Okay. The fourth one is going to be called clone number. So evidently you can see we're dealing with clones. Okay, so that, oops, I think I uh, created it for all sprites. Make sure you delete that. And uh, you need to select the option for the sprite only. And uh, for the clone number, this is the most important thing. If you don't do this, you'll get into some really wacky bugs. So now you can click OK. And uh, you can hide all of them. So when we receive show more enter, first of all, I'm going to hide because I don't want to show myself right away. Um, and then I'll set up a couple of variables. So I'll, uh, I'll be setting beginning start x to be negative 200 then i'll be setting um game start x to be uh game start x to be where's that yeah game start x to be negative 280 and i'll be setting dim to be 80. now there's absolutely no coincidence uh, i mean there's absolutely nothing in relation between these two and it's just a coincidence that uh, dim when subtracted uh from beginning start x uh, adds up to um, game start x but anyway just have these three variables set up and once again just like um, uh, just like the initializer I'm going to put all of this within a function just so that the code runs slightly faster so I'll be calling this function as reset that's what I'll call it I think oops I didn't I didn't mean to put all of them in capital so let's just say reset and run without screen refresh now I can click ok and within define reset just put all of these in and call the function after this I'll make another block this time it's going to be called create clones uh, but this time what we'll do is not click on run without screen refresh because if you do that's going to mess up our code a little bit so now you can click ok and this time you can drag the create clones uh, create clones down there and within the create clones function initially you want to set uh, and i'll move a little bit to the right initially you want to set clone number to be one and you repeat four different times so you, uh, you change the clone number by one and then you also, so change clone number by one. And uh, you also add in this block which says create clone of myself. So what this is going to literally do when we call the function right here is that it's going to create four different clones, but each of the clones is going to have a unique clone ID, if you want to put it. So this clone number is going to be that clone ID, and we can use this to distinguish between the clones. So the clone uh, on the extreme left is going to be clone one, and the clone on the extreme right is going to be clone 4. And since our code is going to be consisting of four, um, four different coins, I'll be calling them coins, uh, you can start to see where this is going. So once you're done with this, this is just going to be uh, when we receive show move enter. The real part of our code is only going to be starting when uh, the sprite is clicked. So I'm going to grab a when sprite is clicked and I just realized I forgot to do one thing. So when we do receive the initialize message, we won't be setting up anything, but it's important that we get rid of all the clones because remember at the end of the game, uh, we will be broadcasting this initialize message. And because of that, we need to make sure that the clones are deleted or we'll just have twice as many clones as we did. And that's not going to be a good thing. So when I receive initialize, I'm going to add this one line of code, which is delete this clone. And since this is an event, it's going to detect across the clones and delete all of the clones except for this sprite which you can see right here. So when the sprite is clicked, uh, I'm gonna first have an if then checker. So I'm gonna check if the move, uh, if the can make move variable is set to yes, which it is initially in the initializer, you know that. So if can make move is yes, then what I'll do is say switch costume to, uh, not switch costume actually, I'll be saying next costume, not next backdrop, but next costume. So it's gonna switch over to the costume and you'll see how that works. But after this, I'll be changing something in my list. So not add thing, but instead of uh, all of that, I'll be saying replace item, but I'm not just gonna replace any item. I'm gonna replace the item clone number of correct move with, um, uh, with instead of thing, I'm gonna say costume name, and you can grab that from looks. So what this is essentially gonna do is to change our list in such a way that the costume is going to be shown in the list. You'll see how that works. And after this, you can head over to events and grab this block which says broadcast and wait. 
and you can broadcast a new message and this is going to be called check if start uh, check if start done don't worry about what is going to happen if this message is going to be uh, you know called we'll do that in the next video but just have that in place now after this we set up what happens um, uh, we have to set up what happens when the sprite uh, is uh, clone because we set up what happens when the sprite is clicked but it isn't really clear what the sprite is supposed to do when it is cloned. So now I'm going to uh, grab a new block from control and this is going to be when I start as a clone and after this I'm actually just going to call in a function which we will define but just hold on for a second. This function is going to be called setup um, but here we'll be having four different parameters. The first one is going to be called size the second one, oops, size. The second one, I'm going to call it um, Y position or just Y pause for short. The third one, I'm going to call it start X. And the fourth one, I'm going to call it dim. Okay. And now you can just click OK. Don't, uh, don't click run without screen refresh. Um, you can click OK. And oops, I didn't mean to do that. Now you can drag this code a little bit up because this is going to require some space. And I'm actually going to zoom out a little bit so that I can manage my space better. And you can see there's going to be quite some long code that's coming up here. So when I start as a clone and I'll zoom back in, we can just uh, put in the setup function. And uh, here within these four parameters, the first one, we can just enter in the size. And in this case, it's going to be 200. The Y position is going to be zero. Um, now the start X uh, initially is going to be beginning start X. And lastly, the dimension is going to be just dim. So once you've set that up, um, nothing's really going to happen because we haven't defined this function. So that's what we're going to do now. And here I'll add in, uh, I'll start by adding in a condition check. So I'll say if not clone number is five, because clone number five is going to correspond to the sprite itself. And I just want four clones. I don't want the fifth clone to exist. So uh, fifth clone, and in this case, I just mean the sprite itself. So if not clone number is five, then I will be doing all of this. So I'll be first setting the size as a percentage to be the size, then I will be saying go to, okay, so head over to the motion category, gra uh, grab a go to, and within our X position, it's gonna be a little bit different, but for the Y position, just put in Y, okay? And after this, I'll be saying uh, show. So we, uh, we're essentially just going to some particular position and showing, but what we will do is to set up our X position as a function of clone number, so that each of the clones go to, um, go to a different X position. So now head over to operators, grab a plus, and then a multiplied by. So within this plus, you can start uh, by putting start X, and uh, within the multiplied by, first put in dimension, and then you can put in the clone number. And that is pretty much it. So essentially all of them are gonna arrange the right ways if you wanna think about it. And the best way to illustrate it is just to click on show. And now you can see that for some reason, all the clones are in the extreme left. Now I wasn't really expecting that to happen. So I will check my code once and then I'll be right back. All right, I just went through my code and I found the bug. And while I was making that comment about how the beginning start X minus the uh, dimension was equal to game start X, I actually uh, added up a minus, which I wasn't supposed to, and just changed that to be 80. And now when you press the green flag, you should be able to see that all of these things come pretty nicely. And in case you want to customize a little bit, you can just change in this beginning start X. For example, if I set it up to 199, for example, and then you press the green flag, you can see that we move a little bit to the right. And in case you want it to be right at the center of that square, you can set it to be I don't know, 195 or something. And you can see that that worked pretty neatly. That's up to you. And I'm going to leave it at that for this video. In the next video, we'll be going more into what happens when we have all of those things set up and when we start the game. And in case you didn't notice, we can actually just click on them and change the costumes. But as of now, they change pretty stupidly. So it's important to reorder the costumes in the next video. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.